Alrighty everyone, welcome back to the third sea guide. Now, if you're here, you've probably watched my first and second sea guide. We're pretty much just going to do the same thing, cover everything you'll ever need to know about the third sea in one single video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the third sea kind of throws you in some deep waters straight away because the first quest that you have to complete is this one right over here in Port Town, and it is the Pirate Millionaire. Now, these guys are really, really annoying to farm. I highly recommend throughout this entire third C, you are using the Buddha Fruit. If you are not using the Buddha Fruit, you are going to seriously struggle going through the third C. Because, trust me, these bosses, these NPCs, they are no joke. They have a ton of abilities, and they are hella annoying without the Buddha Fruit. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys the best way to farm these Pirate Millionaires really quickly. So the best way, in my opinion, is to go over to one side... And just grab three of them up really quickly like this. You can grab four. I don't recommend it. These guys are really annoying. You'll see that in a second. There you go. Those attacks right there are just really, really annoying. As you can see, they're pushing me back. But of course, if you have the Buddha Fruit, this can be made very easy if you just do it and use it. But if you don't have the Buddha Fruit, I recommend using some sort of ranged attack. Keeping in the air as best as you can. And once you reach level 1550, you'll be able to move on to the boss. Don't even worry about doing the second quest here unless you have a Buddha Fruit. If you have a Buddha Fruit, you can do this quest. Just go up to the top over here and you can farm them like normal. But if you don't have a Buddha Fruit, do not fight these guys. Trust me. All right, so once you reach level 1550, you can take on the first boss of the third C. Now, the bosses in the third C are very similar to the second C bosses in the fact that they spawn absolutely nowhere near the NPCs that you're fighting on the island. Usually they are away in their own little space. So this is the first boss, the stone boss right here. I will show you where to find him really quickly. Just follow me. All right, so here he is. Now, this guy is a pretty solid introduction into the third C bosses. He isn't that strong, but he does a crazy amount of damage when you are too close to him. So I recommend you are using ranged attacks against this guy because if you get close he will do a ton of damage so just be very very mindful of that but apart from that he's a pretty easy boss and he's a lot easier than most of the third c bosses so just beat him up and uh, we will move on to the next area let's go all right so this is where the guide gets a little bit weird now so we're about to move on to the next island which is the hydra island but we're only going to move on if you are using the buddha fruit if you are not using the Buddha Fruit, you are not allowed to move on to this next island. Trust me, I'm doing this for your own sake, because if you try to move on to this next island, you are going to struggle, you're going to hate life, and it's not going to be a fun ride. Just continue to farm here. Trust me, it is not worth the struggle. However, if you are a Buddha user, you are allowed to move on to the next area, because it is a lot easier for you guys. So, without further ado, let's head to the next island. Let's go, just follow me. Okay, so at level 1575, you'll be able to take on the Dragon Crew Warriors here over at the Amazon Quest Giver. This is the quest right here. Now, this is the quest I recommend only doing if you have the Butterford. Otherwise, you should still be on Port Town. Do not come over to this area whatsoever. But pretty much what you want to do with the Butterford is just run over to these people right here and hit them. Now, try not to get pushed up into the air. They do have an attack that does push you up into the air. Um, there you go. You can see it right there, which is kind of annoying. It slows down your progress a little bit, but pretty much you just want to beat those guys up until you've reached the next level threshold, which will be very, very soon. These people shouldn't take very long at all, but whatever you do, do not take on this quest. Even if you're a Buddha user, do not fight this quest. And the reason you do not do that quest is because they are all the way up on this mountain over here. They are too far away from the quest giver and they deal an ungodly amount of damage to you, even if you're a Buddha user. So just ignore that quest altogether. Okay, so once you've reached level 1625, you can move on to the next quest. Now, where is that next quest? Well, it's very simple. It is all the way up here. You pretty much just got to fly all the way up onto the top of Hydra Island. And you'll see this massive area that's up here hidden away. Now, all you want to do is just follow me. And here's the quest giver. So all you have to do is talk to this person right here and take on the female islander quest. Now, again, you shouldn't really do this quest unless you have the Buddha fruit. 
Um, otherwise, you should still be in Port Town. I know that sounds ridiculous because you're so far off your level, but trust me, that's kind of the sacrifice you have to make if you don't have the Buddha fruit. Now, if you're not using Buddha, you can do this quest, but I seriously don't recommend it. But if you're using Buddha like me, what you can do is come over here and you can beat up these female islanders. They spawn all the way up through here. It's a pretty easy run. All you have to do is just turn on your Buddha form and go and slap them up a little bit. Pretty easy stuff. Not very a difficult quest. And then once you reach the next level for the quest, again, these guys are very easy once again. All you have to do is grab the giant islander quest at level 1650. And they're just spawn over here where you can just run across and turn on your Buddha form and beat them up again. Very easy stuff. They're not hard to beat either. And once you've done that, all in one take, all you have to do is head back to the quest giver once again and take on the boss quest, which is the Island Empress, and she will spawn right over here. Now, it's very easy to find her. She just spawns right here. But do be warned, this Island Empress is no joke. She does a lot of damage. She has good range, and she will mess you up if you're not using a Buddha fruit. I have struggled many a times on my Noob to Pro series where I have fought this boss and she has just absolutely destroyed me. But if you do die, you spawn very close to this area here, so it's not really that big of a deal, but just be warned, she does a lot of damage. Okay, so it is time for your next quest. So once you have gotten to level 1700, everyone can do this. Even if you don't have Buddha, you can do this too. Now, if you've gotten to level 1700, what you can do now is head over to the giant tree area over here, which just follow me. Alright, so once you've made it over to this quest giver right here, you'll notice that the Marine Commodores are the guys you can beat right here. Everyone can do this quest. They're super easy to beat these guys. Just know these guys have Haki as well, and they have a very high elemental level. So if you're using a Logia Fruit, uh, it won't activate until much later down the track. I noticed that when I was fighting these guys for the very first time with the Light Fruit. So just be very careful. Of course, if you have Buddha Fruit, you can group all these guys up very easily and just give them a bit of a whack. Now, if you're on this island and you reach the next level, which is these guys, the Marine Rear Admirals, do not fight these guys. Just skip them all together. Uh, honestly, even if you're using Buddha, I don't recommend fighting these guys at all. They're just a waste of time because you have to go all the way around the back of the map, which is super annoying to get back and forth. Just skip those guys all together and fight these ones instead even if you're using Buddha. Okay, so it's time for the Kilo Admiral boss. Now, where to find this boss is really, really simple. All you gotta do is head all the way up to this area up here in this tree. And there we go. She spawns right here. Now, she's pretty easy to beat. Honestly, she's one of the easier third seed bosses to beat. She has a lot of health, but that's about it. She doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So you should be pretty good with whatever fruit you are using. But once you beat her, you can just go ahead and do the next quest at the next island. Okay, so once you hit level 1,775, it is technically time to move on to your next area. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly go over some information for the third sea that you might need to know. Well, you definitely need to know. So just follow me on the boat to the castle in the sea. Okay, so the castle on the sea is a pretty notable area for the third sea. It's directly in the middle of the map, and it's a hotspot for players as well. It's also a safe zone, so you can't be killed here in PvP. But if you come across to the right side, you can find all the martial art teachers as well, which is really, really nice if you need to grab one of your old fighting styles. Now, I highly recommend you are using Electric Fighting Style for the third sea, because you're going to get your hands on a fighting style called Electric Floor today. And that is going to be a very, very good fighting style. So come across to the Mad Scientist Rabbit and try to get Tit to 400 Mastery. Now, if you're still using Sharkman Karate from my second sea guide and you're using the Buddha Fruit, that's completely fine. It doesn't really make a difference. But if you want a fighting style that is very, very solid in terms of its abilities, I highly recommend you grab the Electric Fighting Style and level it up all the way to 400 Mastery because it's going to be very, very useful. Now, another notable thing is that you can do your raids here as well. If you come across over here, you can speak to this person here, and you can grab a raid microchip, stand on this plate, and click the green button and do your raids. Now, 
there is a couple more things over here you can check these guys out over here if you would like i'm not going to go into them too much because they're just kind of not that important but i recommend you check out the whole place there is a little bit of stuff to do around here now there is one other thing that i kind of want to access and i want to talk about right now now if you see on your screen a message pop up at the very top saying pirates are attacking the castle this is the castle they are talking about i recommend as soon as you see this message you come straight to this castle and you defeat the pirates that will spawn around this area around here because once you beat them you get a free fruit which is really really cool so i recommend you do that every single time you see it that happens every one hour and 15 minutes just make sure you are doing that okay anyway it is time to head across to the next island which also has a bunch of things that are really important to talk about so let's head there just follow me Alright, so here we are at the Floating Turtle. Now, the Floating Turtle is a really, really important spot once again in the Third Sea because this area has the pretty much the Second Sea's cafe uh, over here, which is called the Mansion. Now, this is where all the players will gather to trade and things like that. But before we head there, I just want to quickly show you where the uh, NPC is that you can learn Electric Floor Fighting Style at. He is pretty much all the way over here. Okay, so this is the previous hero. Now, once you get to the previous hero, he will give you the Electric Claw Fighting Style once you have all the requirements, that being all the fragments, the mastery, and all the money. So once you've got that stuff, you can do a little quest for him and get the Electric Claw Fighting Style. It's really easy. I'm not going to cover it too much because it's probably one of the easiest fighting styles in the game to grab. It's super, super easy, so I'm not too worried about talking about it. But once you've done that, you can just follow me over to the mansion, which is the main part of the Floating Turtle Island. Alright, so here we are. This is the mansion. Now, this has got all the important stuff on it, just like the Blocks Fruit Gacha, the Blocks Fruit Dealer. Also has a couple other notable important things as well. But pretty much, it's got all the trade stuff. It's everything you'll ever need. It's pretty much the cafe of the Third Sea. Super simple stuff. And this is where you're going to you know, do most of your business when you're on the floating turtle or when you're in the third seat. So, without further ado, let's get back to leveling. Okay, so let's get back to leveling. At level 1,775, you'll be able to take on the Fishman Raiders, which is right here, this quest right here. Now, this guy is found right at the start of the floating turtle, pretty much where you enter in, and you can take on the Fishman Raiders. Now, these guys are really easy to beat. There's really nothing to them that you should really have to worry about. Just group them up like you have been doing before and just kill them there's nothing to worry about they're super easy to be and you can move on to the next quest okay so at level 1800 you can take on the fishman captain quest which is right here now unlike a lot of the other quests you can do this quest as well if you've got any sort of fruit all you have to do is group these guys up together once again there's really nothing you have to worry about to beat these guys just group all of them up together and then kill them like normal even if you don't have a Buddha fruit, you can do this quest as well. Super, super easy. Then we can move on to the next area. Okay, so once you reach level 1825, you can head across to the next quest, which is the Forest Pirates. So just follow me. Okay, so here we are. All you have to do is take the quest from this guy right here, the Forest Pirates. Now, I recommend you farm these guys until you are level 1900. You can do it with whatever fruit you're using. You don't need a butter fruit for these guys. And I recommend you just group them up in groups of two or three. Very simple stuff. These guys are pretty easy to beat. But I definitely recommend you do not fight these guys whatsoever. And the reason you don't fight these guys is because they're all the way on top of this mountain. And it just kind of takes a long time to get back and forth between the quest giver. So it's not really worth it. Now, if you want to know where the boss is, you can easily find the boss, the elephant captain boss right here which is just located all the way over here. Now, he's really easy to find, but he is quite a tanky boss. He has a lot of health, so just keep that in mind and make sure to be careful when you are fighting him. But pretty much just farm this guy over here, the boss, and all these guys over here until you're level 1,900, and then you'll be able to move across to the next area, which is on the same island. This island has a lot of quests. Okay, so once you've reached level 1,900, all you need to do is just follow me. Let's go. This is the next quest giver right here. As you can see, the jungle pirate is the next quest you need to take. And these guys will just spawn down here. 
they're pretty scattered out which is kind of annoying but all you need to do is just use a butter fruit or whatever fruit you're using and go and kill them group them up in twos or threes and just kill them very simply and you just want to farm those guys until you're able to grab your next quest okay so the next quest that you should be doing is the musket tears now these guys i do not recommend doing unless you have a butter fruit but if you do have a butter fruit you want to know something really really cool about these guys is they're probably one of the best groups of npcs to farm because they are so close together you can kill them so quickly and rinse and repeat with a butter fruit that you will just level up like a crazy man so i highly recommend you do that and once you've reached a high enough level to get and fight the boss, I recommend you do not fight this boss. Do not fight him. He is probably, arguably, one of the strongest bosses in the entire game. I will show you where he is, where he's located. But I do not recommend you fight him, because he is very, very strong. He has his own little domain right here. Do not fight this guy, trust me. He is way too strong for anyone at this level. Unless you're an absolute madman and you want to test your, like, luck, uh, go for it. But other than that, I don't recommend you fight that guy. Okay, so once you've reached level 1,975, you can head across to the next island. So just head back to the dock of the floating turtle, and then you can head across and just follow me. Okay, so now that we are on the Haunted Island, there is something that I must tell you guys. This island is a little bit of a special one in the fact that it does have a little special thing that allows you to get some double XP codes and also some fragments, money, and some couple other things that are pretty cool as well. So, when you kill NPCs on this island, they have a chance to drop a little resource called Bones. Now, it's not always guaranteed. You can see I got one there. It's not always guaranteed, but once you have 50 of these bones, you can head across to this graveyard over here, and you can speak with an NPC called the Death King. Now, you need 50 of these bones, and once you speak to him, he will give you a random thing. Now, you're not always guaranteed the same thing, but as you can see, I rolled some money, right? So, you can roll, like, money, fragments, and XP codes as well, which is really, really useful. So, just keep in mind, when you're killing NPCs on this island and you have 50 bones, come across and give it to this guy right here. Now, he does sell two legendary items to you, but I'm not going to talk about those today because they're not very essential for leveling up. So, just don't worry about those if you get those. If you get them, you can look them up on another guide if you would like. But, pretty simple, just keep an eye on how many bones you have when you're killing NPCs on this island. Because, trust me, that is really, really awesome to know that you can get XP codes here. It's very helpful. Okay, so back to farming and leveling up at level 1,975. You get to fight these skeletons over at the same graveyard I was talking about before. Now, if you have a butterfruit, these guys are going to be really easy to beat because they're just really grouped up and makes it a lot easier for killing them. Or if you have any fruit that does a lot of AoE damage, like a magma fruit or something like that, these guys are going to be pretty easy to beat. Just group them up, group as many as you can possibly, and just kill them. Just be careful though, when you are grouping them up, it can be kind of annoying because they do actually get stuck on all these little like gravestones and stuff like that. And they can be caught, which is really annoying. So just keep that in mind. But if you're using Butterfruit, as I said, it's going to be super, super easy. I have no idea what just did that damage to me. What was that? Okay, anyway, the next quest is at level 2000. Now, this is going to be the living zombie quest. I do not recommend you fight these guys unless you have Butterfruit. Because trust me, they just use Flash Dep. It's super annoying. Um, I'm sure you guys have fought someone that uses Flash Dep by now. It can be very, very irritating. But this is where they spawn right here. Now, if you do have a Butterfruit... They are very easy to beat because as you can see, there's a lot of them. They're all grouped up nice and easily. There's, they're not that spread apart, so you can kill them very quickly. But again, if you don't have a Butterfruit, I wouldn't recommend fighting these guys at all as they can be quite a pain. Okay, so once you reach level 2025, you'll be able to take on the next quest, which is the Haunted Castle. Now, this is actually in the castle itself. As you can see, these guys right here are very easy to beat. You shouldn't have to worry about them. Again, if you're using a Butterfruit, I, I sound like a broken record, but they're very grouped up, very easy to kill. Same with the next quest that is below us as well. Pretty much, you just want to farm the top area until you are level 2075. Now, you can take on the Possessed Mummy quest, but the reason I personally wouldn't is just because they are a little bit far away. They are all the way below, and you have to keep going up and back. 
for the quest, which is really, really annoying. But if you do want to farm lots and lots of bones, definitely farm these guys right here because they drop four to five bones per kill. Well, sometimes, right? But they drop a lot of bones. They drop the most bones in the entire area. So I highly recommend you kill these guys if you want to get yourself a ton of bones, ton of fragments, money, and some XP codes as well. That is a good idea if you're doing that. Even if it does delay your leveling experience a little bit, I think that's not a bad idea. But once you've reached level 2075, we'll be able to move on to the very last island of the third sea. And this island sucks because it takes a very long time. But we got to do it, so let's get through it. Okay, so once you've reached the level I said before, which is 2075, we can head across to the Sea of Treats, which is the next island, so just follow me. All right, so once you've reached the island, all you need to do is just head up over here and you can take on the peanut scout quest from this guy right here. Now, I recommend you just farm these guys. You do not, do not farm the peanut presidents. Um, it's just a lot easier to farm the peanut scouts if you're using whatever fruit. As you can see, they're located all across the beach up here as well. It's pretty easy to farm these guys and I just want you to farm them until you are level 2100. And 25. Okay, so once you've reached level 2125, you can move across to the next island. Now, the Sea of Treats is a little bit weird because it is like multiple islands in one, but where I want you to head is literally just across over here in this little island right here, which is not too bad. You can see though, this island is a lot of different islands all put together, which is kind of annoying, but pretty much what you want to do is just take this quest right here, the Ice Cream Chef, and these guys spawn just all around here. They're pretty easy to beat as well if you have a Buddha fruit or just any fruit in general. You don't need Buddha for this one either. But these guys are really easy to beat, so just farm those guys a ton. Okay, so at level 2150, you'll get your next quest, which is the Ice Cream Commanders. Now, you can take these ones if you do want to. You don't need Buddha fruit for these ones either. It's up to you completely. They're not too far away from the quest giver, so I would say they're actually kind of worth it in a way. Definitely farm these guys if you want, but if you just want to keep farming these guys, that's completely fine as well. Doesn't really make that much of a difference, but it's up to you as I said. Okay, so the next boss that you will fight and the last boss of the third sea will be the Cake Queen. Now the Cake Queen is an extremely difficult boss to fight and she spawns all the way up here on this spoon thingo right here. You can get up here pretty easily just by jumping. I'm going to use light though because I'm a cheater. Anyway, there we go. So the Cake Queen is here. You get this small, tiny arena to fight her in. Uh, this is why I don't like fighting this boss at all. She does a ton of damage. So I don't recommend you fight this boss right away. Just wait until you max level to fight that boss. Honestly, it's not worth it. Unless you have like a ton of people helping you out, which you probably will though, because if you're in a public server, 90% uh, of the server will probably go to that boss and try to kill her because she's very farmed. But anyway, you just want to keep farming these NPCs down here until you have reached the right level where you can move on to the next area. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit weird. Now, if you are using a Buddha fruit, you're going to want to move on to the next island at level 2200. If you are not using a Buddha fruit, you're going to want to move on to the next island at level 2250. If you're not using a Buddha fruit, just keep farming these guys until you're level 2250, as I said before. And if you're using a Buddha fruit, what you want to do is head across to this island just over here. Pretty much what you want to do is just farm the next NPCs because these guys are perfect for the Buddha fruit. And pretty much what you want to do is head to this quest giver, get the first quest right here, and just head across over to these guys. Now these guys are really, really close together, which is perfect for the Buddha fruit because you can kill them all very quickly. Now, if you're using a Buddha fruit, do not do this quest over here. Do not worry about the second quest right here. Just keep farming until level 2250 at these guys right here. Until you get to level 2250, uh, do not move on to the next quest. Okay, so once you are level 2250, whether or not you're using Buddha or not, pretty much what you want to do is head over to the next quest, which is located over here. It shouldn't be too far away. Here it is. There we go. So you just want to take on this quest right here, the Baking Staff quest. And there we go. So you'll be able to kill these guys. Now, these guys are really easy to beat for anyone. So that's why I recommend just waiting until you're level 2250 if you're not using the Buddha fruit. Uh, do not fight these guys up here. These guys up here are the head bakers. 
they have a little ability called explosion. Haha, ha, you're dead. Uh, it's not a fun ability. I'm trying to let. I'm trying to make him do it. There we go. Right. That does a lot of damage. I have max health, and that did half my health. So do not fight those guys. Just ignore them completely. Do not fight them. They're not worth it. Trust me. But pretty much once you have leveled up enough, you'll be able to move on to the last and final island at level 2300. Okay, so I just want to show you guys this really quickly. Now, when I said pirates will attack the castle, I mean pirates will attack the castle. So what I recommend you do is get your butterfruit out and just start killing these guys that are attacking the castle like this. And once they're all dead, you can get yourself a free fruit. I definitely recommend you do this. It's very easy to solo if you are using a butterfruit. If you're not using a butterfruit, this might be a little bit challenging. But uh, other than that, it should be really, really easy. All right, there we go. So we did it. We completed it. We got a random blocks fruit and we got a magma fruit, which is kind of nice, actually. But I've got too many of those, so I have to drop it, unfortunately. But as you can see, you can get some really cool fruits from that if you just do it. Um, obviously, that's probably one of the best ways to get free fruits in the third sea. So just make sure you are doing it. But without further ado, let's head back to the Candy Cane Island and keep leveling up. Okay, so back to leveling. Once you've reached level 2300, what you can do is just head across to the next island, which is the Chocolate Island. Not this island right there. This one right over here. So pretty much what you want to do is just head across over here. Whatever fruit you're using, whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're using butter fruit or if you're using just a normal fruit. Because this island is really easy to farm anyway. So what you want to do is take the chocolate warrior or cocoa warrior one and just come over here and farm these guys. They're really easy to beat. But pretty much just farm these guys only until you have reached the level requirement for the next island. Because these guys are super easy to beat. So I highly recommend just farming these guys until you are level 2400. In my opinion, that is the easiest way to do it. But once you've reached that level, you can head across to the next island. Okay, so once you've reached level 2400, 100 levels using these guys. Now, it's going to take a while to reach 100 levels using on one NPC. But if using two times XP, it won't take that long. But once you've done it, what you want to do is head across to the next island, which is the Candy Cane Island located just over here behind the Chocolate Island. Now, there's a very, very simple quest on this island. It's super, super easy. What you want to do is head into the center, grab the candy cane quest right here, the candy pirate, and just keep farming these guys over and over until you reach level 2425, where you can fight these snow demons, and they will take you all the way to max level. And then congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, you have reached max level inside of Blocks Roots. I hope this video helped you guys out a ton and i hope you guys are able to reach max level off this video alone or off all my videos that i've created on every c but thank you guys so much for watching please consider to like and subscribe if this video helped you at all it does help the channel quite a lot and i will see you guys in the next guide or videos let's go